Now the Bison will kick off to the Spartans who will attack from left to right and the wind has died down a little bit, Eddie, at the start of the second half. Here's the kickoff by Sean Cole. Handled by Calhoun. Out to the 20. Spins away from one tackle and stumbles his way to about the 33 yard line. Run out of bounds on the near side by Byron Mayers. You know, Andrew, just to put the first half into perspective on how good the Spartans team is, uh, you know, just looking at, at the numbers for everybody, really, uh, the Spartans actually have not played their best football here today, but still they have 20 points to show for the first half, a 17-point lead. This just really speaks to the level at which the Spartans are playing at right now. Hand off Burke. He's gotten a lot of touches, and he'll plunge forward, pick up a couple more. And that was his 19th carry of the game already, and that was the first play from scrimmage in the third quarter. So Jacob Burke definitely getting a workout behind Rob Kuda. What a workload he's had today. A couple more yards on second down. So it'll be third and manageable. And Andrew, this was a guy in Jacob Burke who really, as we mentioned, ran all over uh, this Bison defense a season ago in nearly 200 yards. So the Spartans really just waiting for him to get back to his normal self and get into about five to six uh, yards a carry. Not quite there yet, but they're hoping to get him there. Third and four from the 39. Kuda rolling out right and passes near side for Hurd. He's got it. Zach Hurd for a Spartan first down. And he was at the head of the herd right there, pun intended, Andrew, but uh, this is not a route that we're normally accustomed to seeing Zach Hurd run. He just runs a streak route straight to the end zone, but this was an out route to the sideline and, and Hurd really developing as a solid option for Kuda in the passing game. Nice route by Hurd, who, as you mentioned, is usually the big deep threat in this offense. At least he has been this year. We made note of it earlier. Over 32 yards per catch, that is the... Third best in Division Three entering today. Kuda in the shotgun snap. He'll look out over the middle. Oh my goodness. Green pastures abound for Zach Hurd, but the pass too far from Kuda. Yeah, I think that's really the one element to the Spartans offense that really hasn't quite been there today is the accuracy of Kuda. You know, coming into the second half was under 50%, which is a little uncharacteristic for him, especially at this point in the season. But uh, Ikuda will definitely get there. Those passes are going to get more accurate as we get into the game. Second and 10 from the 48. Kuda with pressure. It's a screen dumped out to Burke on the right side. He cuts it up the middle for a first down. Back to the right sideline, tripped up near the 30. Yeah, and haven't seen too much of this formation this season. Did a little bit last year, but Burke catching the pass out of the backfield and having a couple of Offensive lineman in the flat to assist him in getting the first down and more yardage after that. Keandre Murphy tripping him up. They'll spot it at the 28 for first down. Anthony checks in in the backfield. Now he's on Kuda's left hip. Kuda looking left, flushed out, steps up, lots of pressure. Somehow escapes. Now he'll tuck and run. Kuda inside the 20, taken down near the 15-yard line. Yeah, and in the past, this is something that Rob Kuda would do about 10 to 15 times a game, but he's uh, kind of slimmed down on the high-volume runs uh, for Kuda this season, and that's uh, mostly to keep him healthy. But this time, uh, defense just uh, gave it to him, and Kuda took advantage. It's a first down run for Rob Kuda. Zach Hall checks in in the backfield with Aguilar in a three-wide set. Bethany loading the box a bit as Kuda gets instructions from the sideline on first and 10 from the 16. The hand is to Hall, off left tackle inside the 15, got about two yards, taken down at the 14. And a big reason why the Spartans have 20 points on the board at this point in the game is because they have had four red zone trips and four red zone scores. So that's a high rate of efficiency uh, for Case Western Reserve inside the 20-yard line. Expecting another score here, but definitely not wanting to settle for a field goal. 
Single back set from the left hash, four wide, three on the near side, Fan, Medved, and DeFrancesco. This is Kuda looking right corner, Justin Fan to the end zone. Yeah, and you definitely love to see a guy like Justin Fan get into the end zone. One of the most exciting players on the field, and Rob Kuda just finding the open man. How does Justin Fan get so wide open? Well, he can put any number of moves on you. And for Fan, that is his fourth receiving touchdown of the year. What a career year for that young man in his fourth season. Six passing touchdowns in the last two weeks now for Rob Kuda. He picks up his second of the afternoon. This is Carniol on the PAT. It is good, and it's 27 to three Spartans. A nice drive for Case, culminating in the passing touchdown to Justin Fan, who Eddie has emerged as the top receiving target for Rob Kuda this year. Yeah, and I think a big reason for that is just because of the fact that he's been around for a while. You know, he's a senior, and Rob Kuda definitely does tend to uh, favor guys who have been there and done that before. But, you know, Justin Fan just brings such a unique skill set um, to this team. Um, one of the smaller receivers that we've had here in, in Spartanville in the last several years at only five foot eight, but uh, you know Justin Fan with his speed and agility, one of the better athletes that the Spartans have in the receiving core, and he was able to get on the same page with Rob Kuda very, very quickly. 11.41 to go in the third quarter. It'll be Quinn Salwan to kick it off, as he has done much of today, which has been an interesting development. He's usually the punter. Jackson Colder up usually handles the kickoff duties. Good kick from Salwan, his best of the day, into the end zone and through the end zone as Wright lets it bounce. The talented freshman punter handles the kickoff duties as well today, and so Bethany will set up shop again with Carlin Basin leading the charge. Basin's first half, Eddie, was all right. It was a mixed bag in terms of his Passing efficiency left a lot to be desired, two for nine, but there were a lot of drops mixed in there. But running the football, he proved to be very dangerous. Yeah, he did. He had a dozen carries in the first half, a pretty high number for a quarterback, but 53 net yards, including a couple runs for a first down. He's a, a great athlete, definitely a more of a threat to run. He will go deep looking for Ellis, and Ellis tried to draw the pass interference penalty. He wasn't going to get it. That was Luke Bedell on the coverage. I think it was probably just coincidental contact right there with a the young uh, sophomore defensive back, Luke Bedell, who already has, I do believe, an interception to his credit uh, earlier this season. But great coverage from a young player in the secondary. You know, Andrew, that second cornerback spot has kind of been up for grabs as the season go goes along. And we've seen several different players play at that position, and Bedell has been one of those guys. Basin rolls out right, soft toss. They pick up pretty decent yardage there, getting it to Jonathan Woodbury, the junior from Mingo Junction, Ohio, third down. That's a big guy for a tight end right there, 6'2", 235 pounds. So if you get him the ball in space uh, with the reception from the quarterback, that's going to be awful tough to bring him down um, as well. First reception of the year for Woodbury, the former All-Ohio man out of Indian Creek High School. Third and four from the 31. Basin has a four wide, a three wide set with one tight end and one back. He'll look over the middle. That's caught and has first down yardage for Hunter Klein. The sophomore gets it out past the 35 yard line. That's a pretty good scheme right there by the Bison. You I mean you package all the receivers on the, the same uh, package on the same side of the field, close to the line of scrimmage, and that opens up uh, the middle of the field as the other two guys uh, run deep. Looks like they're trying to give Basin a few more easy passing options. Short passes, about five, six yards. Get him a little more comfortable in the second half. The handoff is up the middle of Raekwon Wright. Got about four or five there out to the 40-yard 40, 40 lines where they'll spot it. And Andrew, if the Bison are going to have some more long, sustained drives, stay on the field and get their first third down conversion, that I think is going to be a big part of the equation. They're going to have to run the ball in between the tackles. 
um, with Ra Raekwon Wright, the most dynamic guy um, touching the football. You gotta do the fundamentals here um, with a big deficit, try to simplify the playbook for everybody on the team, including Carlin Basin. Second and seven from the 40. Basin handles the snap, now steps up, looks right side. He has his man, that's Shaq Ellis. First down, out past the Spartan 40. And that's definitely gonna be a big confidence booster for Carlin Basin. I mean, everything is there, including the protection and the right amount of zip on the football. It's a good route run by Shaq Ellis in front of his own sideline. So overall, very good execution um, for Bethany. Now, if you're the Spartans, you wanna react pretty well on this play because you definitely don't want that first play to lead to another big play for the Bison. That's the first reception of the day for Shaq Ellis who leads this team in receptions now with 20. Played two years at Dakota College before transferring. Now a senior out of Greenville, South Carolina. Basin runs it up the middle. Good yardage out to the 30 yard line. Taken down from behind by Shannon Demery. But Basin got a pretty good push from his offensive line, getting him eight yards. Yeah, he certainly did right there. And it's one thing as a parent when you watch him run with the football and you see his body language, there's a, just a strong desire um, to succeed. And, you know, he wants to put his team in a better position to compete. And he's definitely doing everything that he can with what he's been dealt uh, here early in the game to try to push this team forward. Well, this has been their best drive so far today, bar none. He steps back. Pressure coming from behind. Demery chasing down Basin. He will run out, but a flag is down right around where the Spartans were pursuing the quarterback. Yep, right there in the picture. That's a, a pretty crisp... Uh, Line of vision right there for the flag, clearly going to be against the offense. And it's not every day that a quarterback escapes the clutches of Cameron Brown, but if they do, a penalty is usually the reason. Raquan Wright, the running back, called for the hold. And Andrew, too many times have we seen that matchup right there with Wright and Cameron Brown. That is a big no-no um, for the Bison. They have to avoid that matchup. They have to put an offensive lineman on Cameron Brown. He's one of the best pass rushers this conference has to offer. He has been far too difficult for them to control thus far today, and really that's why at the half, Bethany only had 19 total yards. The Spartans wrapping them up pretty decisively at the line of scrimmage. Yeah, this defensive front for the Spartans is just way too good and way too balanced for the Bisons to be able to do that. Zach Lyon and Dan Techman on the tackle of Raekwon Wright. Techman with a great week last week. The UAA Defensive Player of the Week. First time in his career that he has garnered that honor. He was the UAA Defensive Player of the Week. Rob Kuda, the UAA Offensive Player of the Week. A terrific performance last week by Mr. Techman in the win over St. Vincent. And Andrew, we spend so much time talking about Ian Henderson and Cameron Brown. Well, Dan Techman sometimes is the engine that makes that go. I mean, he draws a lot of the attention away from those two guys so they can get to the quarterback. Basin chased down. This is Brown in pursuit. Techman steps up. He whiffs, but the tackle made from behind by Andrew Benathy. Fourth down. And a man is down on the near side. That is the left tackle, Anthony Martin. And the junior is not getting up. Yeah, and this is another one of these kind of messy plays right here where the pocket just totally collapses and he's doing everything he can to try to push forward that the Spartans are not letting him, but another bad sign. It's been a tough day for injuries on both teams. Definitely can't afford to have any more. This is Abby Hoard, the athletic trainer, taking a look at the right knee of the left tackle, Anthony Martin. He has a brace on each of his knees. You could sort of see in that replay what happened to Martin. It wasn't terribly clear. It was kind of at the bottom of your screen. Maybe you'll get another look at it here. As Basin rolls out, once he reverses to the right, you'll see Cameron Brown come into the picture. There's Brown. There's Martin right behind him. And take a look as he shoves Brown, he comes up lame. 
and then goes down. And so now he is being helped off of the field by the athletic training staff. You can see him favoring that left leg. So we'll see what Bethany does. It'll be fourth and 11 from the 39 yard line to the Spartans. This has been the best drive so far for the Bison, but it's stalling right now. And you wonder down by so many points if they will attempt to maybe go for it. No sense in, or no really anything, nothing you could lose from doing it. A roll of the dice and they will send the offense back out again. Well, and after having such a successful drive really for the first time in this game, that's the last type of uh, you know, a wet paper towel that you want to throw on this drive. If anything, you want it to be because of the Spartans' defense, not because of an injury, but it just worked out that way. Fourth and 11, Basin steps up. Basin running again, and he won't get enough. He's only about one yard shy but it'll be a turnover on downs and Basin is incensed. He thought he had it, but the spot lands him one short. One measly yard short. Jamir Scarborough was jumping up and down. He thought he got it as well. But yeah, take you, a look at Basin. Yeah, you can see a valiant effort right here. He's doing whatever he needs to do to get there. But I think, you know, maybe he gets it after that one, uh, that, that uh, lead leg comes down but uh, that's where they have to mark the spot of the ball. It's where the knee comes down, not where the ball finishes. So thus resulting in a, uh, a turnover and a Spartan first. That's just a good athletic play, but just not enough. Kudo will take over to fan over the middle. He's got his man inside plus territory out near the 40. And Justin Fan. Yeah, getting back into his uh, sweet spot that's in the slot position. He's uh, just to Kuda's right, and that's a position that Kuda's going to find him every time in a slant across the middle. By the way, talking about that injury to Anthony Martin, James Goodwin was the left tackle on that last play, the freshman. We'll see if that continues. Pass too tall on the far side by Kuda, intended for Luke DeFrancesco. Second down. Just really scary to think that you know, Rob Kuda having a career season averaging about 61% on his completion percentages. And here he's hovering at around the 50% mark, but the Spartans have a 27 to three lead. I mean, it's just scary to think about when you put it in that perspective. 6.34 to go in the third quarter. They have such a versatile offense. There's Burke. Picked up about three on second down. Well, I would say for the most part, Andrew, you know, considering the day that Burke had against uh, this defense a year ago, I think that the Bison have actually done really well at uh, kind of bottling up uh, Jacob Burke. He's uh, not quite at 100 yards yet. He's close, but not quite. They definitely knew uh, that they did not want to have him run all over them for a second straight season. And for the most part, they've done an excellent job in slowing down Jacob Burke. Third and seven from the 39. Kuda running around pressure, tossing it out. First down. Out to Zek Medved at the 25 yard line. Definitely a great sign to see Medved getting involved uh, in the passing game. That's a guy that's really been around for a while, but we don't particularly hear his name. He had some injuries here and there, but he is back on the field. He is feeling healthy and strong, and he is contributing as an option for Rob Kuda in such a, a dynamic passing attack. Kuda escaping Khalid Pierce and getting that pass off. So first down for the Spartans. Four wide set. Orsini the lone man on the near side. Screen out, almost intercepted and a flag flies on the near side. Jameer Sykes almost had the interception, but he just dropped what should have been a gimme. Yeah, it definitely looked like an interception at the first glance. But I, I tell you what, Andrew, something, uh, another thing that you're just really impressed with with Rob Kuda is his ability to know where the pressure is coming. I mean, the blitz came from his weak side Kuda didn't even see it, but still had enough knowledge to get rid of the football before the pressure was coming. Just Rob Kuda just 
you know, put together his uh, intangible assets along with his football IQ. That's just a dynamic combination. That results in a sack nine times out of ten, but with Rob Kuda, it, it does not. Well, now they're going to explain the penalty to David Arnold. Looks like 12 men. 12 men on the field is what I saw. So they'll replay first down. First and 15 from the 30. 520 to go in the third quarter. Kuda will hand it off to Burke near the original line of scrimmage. Taking a look again at that Carnegie Mellon Washington and Jefferson game, it is a barn burner. W and J holding on to a 20 to 13 lead at the start of the fourth quarter. On the road at Carnegie, the number 16 ranked Washington and Jefferson side. Coming in at 4-0, 2-0 in the PAC. Carnegie Mellon 5-0, 3-0 in conference play. That's one we'll keep a close watch over as we watch the clock tick down in this one. Big blitz pick up by Burke, but Kuda is wrapped up. Khalid Pierce in on the sack. So too was Chaz Blango. You know, and Andrew, sometimes it's just better to take the sack. And considering what happened on the uh, the previous play where the ball probably could have, should have, would have been intercepted, I think that was the smart play um, by Kuda to take the interception there. And despite the fact that you're in third down and 20, I mean, you've got, you know, the UAA MVP. And with this passing game, you never know where they're going to end up if you give them just one play. It might be more manageable than, than most for, for third down and 20, all things considered. So Kuda steps up on third and 20. He's got Hurd. First down, but the ball is loose, and it is recovered by Bethany. Now the question becomes, was it completed? And I think it was. Hurd seemed to have it inside the 10, and then the ball popped free. Let's get a look. Yeah, I'm with you on this one, Andrew. I, I did think that this was a catch. Definitely comes down with it. A yeah, little it bit of contact right there. I did, it does take a while, but yes, clearly a, a fumble. Joseph Fiasco knocked it loose. Lee Sanders on the recovery. So now the Spartans turnover margin goes to minus one, both on the day and on the season. They entered today at neutral but two fumbles recovered by Bethany and one recovered by the Spartans today. That is the fifth fumble lost by Case this year. Deep in their own territory, started on the two. They might have lost a yard. The ball spotted at the one. And this is really dangerous territory here uh, for Bethany, just considering the stout run defense that Case has and their unrivaled ability to, to get into the backfield and be disruptive and make a quarterback feel uncomfortable. And I'll tell you what, the Bison really have to be careful here in this situation. I mean, that ball is sitting just inside the one yard line, so they have got to get a good push right here on this possession or this could spell trouble. Case does not have a safety this year. Raekwon Wright stacked up at the goal line. They're waiting for the signal. At the half yard line, the entire case defense ran to the sideline thinking safety, but the officials say no, and it's third and 11 from inside the one. Yeah, I, I just couldn't have seen any scenario in which that would not have resulted in the safety, but I'm guessing maybe they gave him forward progress 
basically to the quarter yard line, oh. barely inside the half. But I guess the good news is Spartans with another opportunity for it here if they can get another good push of their own. Look at the nose of the football and the cleat of the center. Basin runs it outside to the left and escapes sure trouble. But my goodness, I mean the offensive linemen had 90% of their feet inside of the end zone. Their heels in the end zone backed up, but Basin runs it out of trouble. It's still fourth down and five, so they'll have to punt. But that was very nearly a safety. In fact, I don't know how it wasn't. Yeah, I mean, uh, the Spartan blue jerseys, they come out of the pile, and about nine or ten of them have the, uh, the safety signal, the two hands just... Uh, holding in their palm right a, right above their head, but yeah, tough break. Spartans will get good field position, needless to say. Side winding line drive punt to Mario Robina, who takes it down to the right side before he is wrapped up. Tackle made by Anthony Fiasco, the punter. And so the Spartans will take over. That was a twisting, turning punt, and difficult for him to... Yeah, you know, Andrew, this has really been a, a head-scratcher of a day as far as the uh, the special team's uh, return game is concerned. I mean, that wind has clearly been a factor uh, in returning these punts, and they've given some really good guys. Uh, you know, Raekwon Wright and Justin Fan. they have uh, really had some difficulty here today. They have been on their A game in terms of fielding the punts first before the initial return. 27-3 Spartans approaching the end of the third quarter. 1.14 to go. Kuda stepping up, has loads of time, now rolls out to the right. And the pass caught for a first down by Hurd to the 20-yard line. Yeah, Aaron Hurd really expanding his horizons. I mean, in the first four games, he's basically been exclusively a deep threat, but this time he's coming back into the uh, playing era, area, area coming back towards the line of scrimmage, and Kuda's able to find him and throws a dart right to number 12. Hurd and DeFrancesco on the near side, Zipko and Spitali on the far, under a minute to play in the third quarter. Burke, the lone man in the backfield. Kuda steps back. Looking over the middle, right through the seam to Zipko inside the five. First and goal. You know, we talked about that touchdown that Zipko had earlier, and just because of his six foot four frame, I mean, he is going to be utilized more and more and more in the red zone. You pair a guy like him and a guy like Jacob Burke, there is just no one player in the red zone that the opposing defense can hone in on. Just too difficult to stop the Spartans inside the opponent 20. John Fexco will check in as a tight end on the right side. Too wide. Hand off to Burke from the five. He'll get to about the four. And that will end the third quarter. So three in the books. Spartans on top on homecoming from DeSanto Field, 27 to three. And when we come back, second and goal from the four yard line. Anova Living is a modern, amenity-rich residential community located in Cleveland's Greater University Circle neighborhood, offering studio, one, and two-bedroom apartment homes. Enjoy all-inclusive living with convenient on-site shopping, 24-hour concierge services, a 24-hour fitness center, resident lounge, and more. All within close proximity to Case Western Reserve University. Anova Living online at anovaliving.com. A special thank you goes out to all of the CWRU sponsors today, including Boxcast, the official streaming video provider of Spartan Athletics. Find out more at boxcast.com. Spartans 27, Bethany College 3. At the start of the fourth quarter, Andrew Luffclass in the booth alongside Eddie Jansen today as the Spartans try to go to 5-0 and oh on the season, 4-0 and oh in President's Athletic Conference play. They won't be back at home for a couple weeks after this, not until they welcome their UAA foes, Washington University of Missouri, Washington University of St. Louis in Missouri on October the 28th, two on the road at Teal and Geneva to follow. Second and goal from the four. Q 
Cuda to set up shop. He'll roll out. Looking left, Aguilar in for a touchdown. That's just way too easy for Aaron Aguilar. The thing about him is when he's lining up at fullback, it's just difficult to get a feel for where he's going. Is he going to block or is he going to run a route? And this time he runs a route and Bethany just leaves him unaccounted for. So that's a touchdown reception number four on the season for Aguilar. And Rob Kuda just continuing to expand his horizons, utilizing every player that he has on the offensive side of the ball. Carney all off of the upright, and it is no good. That is the second missed PAT for Carney all this year. The other one had been blocked, so it's 33 to three Spartans. Aguilar last week, five receptions and a touchdown. This week he's got yet another touchdown. He also had two against Waynesburg. Hey fans, are you following Spartan Athletics on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram? Follow us at Case Athletics. That's at Case Athletics. And use the hashtag Blue Crew. That's hashtag Blue, B-L-U-E, C-W-R-U. Use hashtag Blue Crew to join the conversation. Another good look at that touchdown from Rob Kuda. And Kuda has completed most of his passes when his team needed to, and Aguilar just way too much space to work with. And how about the chemistry between those two, uh, two guys in the Spartans' uh, offensive attack? Aaron Aguilar, definitely a multifaceted player with multiple purposes, whether it's blocking for Jacob Burke or catching a pass from Rob Kuda. He's got a couple touchdowns on the year already. So the kick is handled at about the 10-yard line. Out to the 30, now to the 35. Kick returner was Nijal Rogers, run out of bounds on the far side. Kuda now having a pretty good day in terms of net passing yards. As we take a look at our fine crew today, Brian Trail, Reggie Carter are on the cameras. Davey Barris on the replay this afternoon. Mike Becker, our terrific producer and director, back as always. Take a look at what Rob Kuda has done through the air today. 299 passing yards for Kuda. He has improved his efficiency as well, 19 of 34. Raekwon Wright, chased down, big loss again. Just going back to Kuda was 10 of 23 at the half, then nine of his last 11, so he has heated up, and the uh, Spartan defense once again continuing to bottle up the leading rusher for the Bison. That is Raekwon Wright. He has really had to work hard for the uh, yardage that he has gotten today, but any which way it comes, it has been tough to come by against a very stingy Spartan run defense. 33-3, Case on top. In the fourth quarter, trying to remain undefeated. The defense has been stout against a team that pretty much every week has scored 13 or 14 points. Basin running up the middle on second down, gets back to the 10-yard line. It had been a 10-yard loss on the first play. So it'll set up third down and very long. You look at what Bethany has done week in and week out, they've, they've been pretty consistent in terms of points scored. 13, 13, 13, and then each of the last two weeks, 14. But they're held to three this afternoon and facing third and 17 from their own 10. Basin from deep in his own end. Sets up shop at the 10. Looks out to the right, he's hammered by Techman and the pass too tall for right. Fourth down. Yeah, I think if Dan Techman doesn't hurry this throw, he probably gets off a bit uh, tighter of a spiral and a more accurate throw in the flat to Raekwon Wright. But uh, Dan Techman has really performed well here on the Spartans defense in the last two weeks, winning the UAA Defensive Player of the Week a week ago and making some noise here, uh, just making Carlin Basin feel uncomfortable and not allowing many options deep down the field. Robina is set up at his own 50, or at the 50, 
to return another line drive kick. It's too tall for him, gets a hand on it, now recovers it. From his own 40, he's racing up into plus territory out to the 45 of the Bison, twists and turns out to the 42-yard line. Mario Robina. A big thank you out to the Courtyard Marriott on Euclid Avenue. Make your reservation today by calling 216-791-5678. Robina making something out of nothing, and the Spartans in good territory. They will come out with Ryan Coolidge under center. So Kuda's day appears to be finished. Coolidge in the shotgun. Wassman and Lyon in the backfield. The handoff is to Hall, excuse me, Zach Hall, and he will get about two yards stacked up at the 40. Take and a look. And Andrew, how many weeks in a row have we been able to uh, have the privilege to have the starters more or less come out in the fourth quarter, get a breather, you know, maybe um, nurse some of the bumps and bruises that may they may have acquired throughout the course of the game and just keep them safe from injury going forward and val again valuable playing time for the younger players on the second string coolidge again this time hands off to miles anthony gets wrapped up after a short gain a trio of white shirts coming in there khalid pierce was one of them take a look at some of the scores from around the pac of course we'll start with the big one carnegie mellon taking on Washington and Jefferson. And the lead for W&J has gone to 27 to 13 in the fourth quarter. As they try to, try to remain undefeated. If the scores hold, they and the Spartans will be the last two undefeated teams remaining in the PAC. Coolidge steps up on third and five. And he won't get enough out to the 35. He'll be about three yards short. 6-10 remaining in that game, by the way. Westminster all over St. Vincent, 52-6 to in the third quarter. Thomas Moore in the second quarter, up 28-3 to on Grove City. Waynesburg and Geneva just getting underway. Fourth and three from the 35. The Spartans will keep the offense out there and go for it. Valuable experience for Coolidge. And for the second string, Coolidge steps up. He'll throw near side. That is caught, and it is first down yardage out to the 20-yard line. The reception by Connor Hall. Yeah, this is a really encouraging sign to see from the Spartan second unit. I mean, they've come on to the field pretty uh, early on in the fourth quarter in the last couple weeks, especially here at home. And for the most part, it's been three and out on most possessions, but this time they get the uh, the first down on fourth downs. So that's a really encouraging sign and something to boost their confidence for. Coolidge, the sophomore from Chicago, setting up from the 29-yard line, hands off to Anthony. Anthony twists down at the 25, a gain of four on first down. Definitely a solid gain there, and a Spartans offense just continuing to push forward one of the most dynamic offenses in the conference averaging well over 40 a game that probably still have a chance to get to it here if they can punch it into the end zone one more time second and six from the 25 two weeks ago the second string had a long time to play and we saw sam jenkins go in for a score on a long run there's anthony very close to the marker the officials spotted at the 20. That is where the marker is. And in regards to Miles Anthony, I mean, this is a guy who, I guess to use the basketball term, he was a rotation player um, a season ago and still continues to be one, um, you know, getting carries here. So it's definitely good when you have a second string that has a, a decent amount of experience in the first team. So definitely a big factor uh, in the evolution of the game of Miles Anthony back there. The marker's at the 20, but the ball spotted a half yard short. So third and half a yard to go. The handoff to Anthony, he's tackled in the backfield. Khalid Pierce rips through and makes the stop on third down to set up fourth and short. Yeah, and then 
I mean, when you talk about a guy like Pierce, he was really the, the one guy that you kind of circled him on the depth chart and say, okay, that's the guy that we need to slow down today. Well, the first team definitely did that, but considering that uh, Khalid Pierce is in there with a second unit, he's going to be a little bit more difficult to stop, and he has made some solid tackles here on this drive. This will be a long field goal attempt and a career long for Carniol if he can get it through. It'll be a 40-yarder. Spitali set up to hold at the 30 from the right hash. Good hold. Carniol's kick is wide to the left. No good from Ben Carniol. That was four yards longer than his career long. And so just missed. And the Spartans maintain a 33-3 advantage. One more Spartan sponsor we want to thank. It's Innova Living, located within minutes of Case Western Reserve University's campus and offering studio one and two bedroom apartment homes. Enjoy all-inclusive living with 24-hour concierge service, 24-hour fitness center, resident lounge, and more. Some of the second stringers on the defensive side in as well. Raquan Wright breaks out to the left off the edge. He's got a first down before he's run out of bounds by Nick Kadlasek. And Bill Garvey definitely leaving Bethany's first team in there. A lot of the starters, especially the position players in there as well. So he, if nothing else, is showing that he is committed to these guys going forward, sticking with the, uh, the same lineup as he has all season long and just trying to get something positive out of this drive, something they can put on tape for next week. Now Basin out to the left. He has a first down and pushed out on the far side. Skyler Waitus on the tackle. Yeah, the one thing I would say that Carlin Basin has done for his team today, he has really kept the ball out of harm's way. Only, you know, two sacks, no interceptions. So he's done his best to try to limit the turnovers for Bethany. But, you know, you know fortunately for the Spartans, they've still been able to force uh, a turnover here or there of their own. But uh, on Carlin Basin's part, he has really done a great job of keeping the ball out of harm's way. Under eight minutes to go, 33-3, to three, Spartans on top. Basin in the shotgun, handles a tough snap. Now he'll run it up the middle. And knifes his way through past the 40-yard line. So Case looking to go to 5-0 and to start the year. They will hit the road for two weeks in a row, Eddie. They will have Teal coming up this coming Saturday. Geneva the next afternoon kickoff at 3 o'clock. Saturday the 14th, they're not home until they play Washington St. Louis, Wash U St. Louis at noon on the 28th of October. Basin on th second and six. That ball is tipped and incomplete. Just out of the reach off the hands of Andrew Rossman incomplete. So that's what's coming up for the Spartans. As for Bethany, they have a really tough next couple of weeks. Four weeks in a row, really, for them that are just absolute bears of matchups. They had Carnegie Mellon last week, 17th ranked Case this week, 16th ranked Washington Jefferson next week, and Thomas Moore the following week. Luckily for them, they get W and J and Thomas Moore at home, but that's a small consolation when you're matched up against some of the best teams in the conference and three weeks in a row against undefeated sides. Flags flying from all over the place before this third and six snap. It'll be a false start. They'll back it up. And probably the best thing on the stat sheet, or maybe it does or does not reflect on the stat sheet that the Bison can put on there, is they're offensively, they have been pretty disciplined, and that's the first penalty in quite a while that we've seen um, from this first unit. I mean, they have had one here and there, but for the most part, they have played a pretty clean and disciplined game. It's tough to be disciplined against a great defense. Basin throwing over the middle to Klein. Gets it to the 45-yard line before being taken down. That was third and 11, so that'll set, down, set up fourth. And about one and a half yards to go. Yard markers at the 46. They set it up just inside the 45, and they will punt. Giving another punt 
for Anthony Fiasco, who has had quite a bit of work to do today. Rabina waits, plays it on two bounces from his own one. Reverses field, runs into his own man, and then he is taken down with authority. Tackle made by Baker Benier, and tough field position for the Spartans' second unit. What a busy man Anthony Fiasco has been. That is his seventh punt on the day. Yeah, no question about it. And when you fail to convert on third down on nine of your first ten tries, uh, that's, you know, nine times out of ten that's going to result in a, a lot of punts. And the one guy that you definitely don't want to give a workout to, that is your punter, especially late in the game. You want to stay on the field as long as you can and try to control the clock. This is Julian Kennard now to run the offense and hand it off to Miles Anthony, and he gets pushed backwards. So, Eddie, we were talking a little bit before halftime about the Spartan Club Hall of Fame and the inductees going in tonight. There were a couple football players on there, but I think you'll agree with me, the, the one man of significant note, regardless of what sport you're talking about, is the late Dr. Cy Ostrak and... If you could just talk a little bit about what he has meant to Case Western Reserve University. Obviously, we lost him, unfortunately, this past Monday. But he was not only a mainstay in the aeronautics and research department here at Case, in the engineering department, but also with the wrestling program. And that's why he is being inducted tonight. You know, Andrew, he just seemed to be a man who had a great balance of work and play. He really preached academics first to these kids, but he was kind of a work hard, play hard uh, type of guy and, and really uh, helped a lot of young men here at Case over the years develop into uh, solid leaders, great young men, helped them um, and encouraged them to achieve great, uh, solid grade point averages and to excel um, you know, in the field, on the court, or in wrestling or whatever it was. Uh, he was just a very encouraging uh, man and a great leader in society and he was a very active guy up until his last days I mean he was he was visible here at the games I mean he would not want to miss a, uh, a Spartan athletic event uh, he wouldn't miss it for the world and and uh, you know it's just uh, really sad and tragic that unfortunately he did have to leave us early this week but uh, his legacy will definitely live on and I know that he's been a solid role model for many Spartan athletes over the course of the years, and hopefully um, they'll be able to take his life lessons and apply them in real life situations. Matthew Peterson on that reception on a third down conversion. They converted third and nine. Julian Kennard hands off this time up the middle. Decent gain on the play for Zach Hall. Dr. Cy Ostrank, you mentioned he was always visible. He was here the, the first two home games of the season. He's always here. Always has been here in the president's suite. See him in passing at every Spartan football game. And it's a shame that he is no longer with us, but it is terrific. They are honoring him tonight and honoring him, of course, mostly for what he did with the wrestling program because, of course, this is a, an athletic hall of fame. As Kennard rolls out to the left, Passes short, Wassman juggles, makes the catch out past the 35 yard line and good for first down yardage. And in the athletic side of things, he was a long time part of the, the wrestling program here, the faculty liaison for the wrestling team. But scientifically, I think we mentioned earlier, NASA acknowledged him as one of the 12 superstars of modern aeronautics. It's a member of the American Academy of Arts and Sciences, the National Academy of Engineering, Retired in 05 after 45 years on the case faculty. One of the most storied educational careers, academic careers in this institution's history. And Andrew, I'll, I'll tell you what, I mean, I, how would you have liked to have a conversation with this guy? I mean, you just take a one look at the resume and you just, you just feel the intelligence and, and, and the things that this guy knows. I mean, you just love to, be able to pick his brain, you know, had we had the opportunity to learn, you know, just a thing or two uh, and, and just to try to take a bite of the piece of his knowledge that he's worked 
uh, over so many years to acquire. And, you know, unfortunately, neither of us had that opportunity. Just got to say hello to him um, in passing. But, you know, what a what a really incredibly intelligent man this guy was. Second and seven from the 41, 2.12 to go in the game, 33-3 Spartans, and the flags fly. Just to wrap up on Dr. Ostrak, just hope tonight will be a nice celebration of his life and accomplishments, and it'll be a lot of fun for everybody at the Spartan Club Hall of Fame induction ceremony this evening. Spartans trying to wrap up what will be their fifth win of the year to go to 5-0, and 4-0 and in the PAC and with one of their most dominant performances in terms of defense, allowing just three points so far today. Looks like that's how it will end, depending on how long this drive goes with Julian Kennard. Kennard on second and 12 after the penalty, rolls out to the right, pressure coming, thrown deep and caught on the far sideline. Boy, Julian Kennard doing his best Rob Kuda impression. This is... Uh a very timely, accurate throw on the run. Coming on the move, see the tight spiral. Nice zip on the ball, and that ball gets to where it needs to go in a hurry, just in the nick of time. Probably the best completion we've seen in the young career of Julian Kennard. Let's see a few more of those. First down pass to the freshman from Milford High School in Cincinnati, Chase Witte. 110 on the clock, Kennard getting ready to take a knee. Or 140 on the clock, excuse me. Kennard getting ready to take the knee. We will do so after the first down. That affords the Spartans that opportunity. So Case with a 33-3 lead. Does appear that's how this one will finish. This is the fewest points Case has given up this year. Also the fewest points, interestingly enough, they've scored this year. 33-3. But they will go to 5-0, and 4-0 in the PAC. Bethany will go to 0-6 overall, 0-4 in PAC play. The Spartans will get Teal next Saturday on the road. 3 o'clock kickoff. We're back in three weeks when the Spartans take on Washington at University St. Louis at home with a noon kickoff at DeSanto Field. As for Bethany... We mentioned their gauntlet that they are in the middle of. They had Carnegie Mellon last week, Case this week. Another ranked undefeated opponent, Washington Jefferson, next week. At least they look to remain undefeated. Washington Jefferson wrapping up their game as well. The Spartans wrap up theirs with that last knee from Julian Kennard. And on homecoming, Case defeats Bethany by the final score of 33-3. So the Spartans remain undefeated at 5-0, 4-0 in PAC play. They will end today as one of two remaining undefeated teams in the conference. Much more coming up from DeSanto Field. Eddie and I will come back with final highlights and final thoughts.